Well, it's mailbag time. Got a few big items here. I've actually got loads of things to get through. I'm going to be doing probably three mailbags in one go. A couple of interesting items. This thing is interesting. This is definitely interesting. This probably not. This, maybe. I don't know what's in it. Let's start with this one first. It's a bit crushed. Hopefully it's not broken. And then as you can see, very crushed. A rather large fan. Well, not a large, but large-ish fan. 12 volt, this is a 12 volt one. Doesn't sell how much current it uses though. We should find that out. So basically you've got a suction cup mount and you can mount that on a window or something and you can mount that on there and it's a nice ball joint so you can point this anywhere you want so this is for vehicle use and I was thinking about this in our motorhome because in summer it gets really really hot in there and having some more fans which are not too bulky would be quite nice this is quite compact compared to like a desktop fan or you know some other like desk fan kind of thing you can get which are significantly larger than this and this might be quite nice to tuck somewhere and just have a nice breeze coming from it. So I said you power this thing up and see what actually comes out. Right. I have a power supply over here ready. Let's turn that on. Let's turn this on. And we have nothing. Is it because of this? Yes it is. Right. So, start from off again. So, lowest setting. Strong about 20, so quarter call 30 milliamps, lowest setting. And that's putting a little slight breeze. It's very really quiet. So let's go right to maximum. Somewhat noisy, but it's not too bad. And that's actually putting out a reasonable breeze now, and that's 160 milliamps. So that's not bad at all. And so it's not that noisy. That's certainly quieter than the other fan we'd actually normally use, so that's good. And that's actually a nice directed breeze too. It's okay. So it wasn't here. Basically what it is, if I can get the thing to move, there we go, it's a bit stiff. So this is a tread depth gauge. So you can chuck this in your car, keep it in your car, then you could just sort of, you know, if once in a while you could put it onto your tyres and just probe into the tread depth and find out what your tread depth is to make sure that you're not going down too thin. Alright, so you basically could have, you know, your tread in your car and you put that inside the grooves and it'll tell you what your depth is of your tread and 1.6mm is the legal minimum, so if it gets down to that, you know it's time to replace your tyres. But this is quite stiff. I don't think the other one's any better. You could always put a bit of silicone on, I suppose. This one slides slightly better. It's not, not quite as tight. I'll put a bit of lubrication on these and that'll be better. That's right, I'll chuck those in a couple of cars, I suppose. Of course, a lot of tyres do actually have like a wear indicator built into them, so it's like a, a little line across the uh, grooves in the tread, and when that line is you know, flat across the top, then you know it's um, time to replace them anyway. But there's other parts of your tyre you need to check, like the outer parts and, and the edge, edges and stuff like that, where those wear indicators aren't actually present. So having something like this, so you need to check the whole tyre in various spots, so you make sure it's okay. Good thing to do. Right, first big box, let's have a look at it in here. Wonderful packaging, big gap around it, which means when they ship the box and it gets thrown around it will be banging into the sides. Uh, at least it's got a decent amount of bubble wrap on it, so it probably is fine. I usually like to see them packed into the box, fully surrounded, so they don't flop around inside the box. But it's now, yeah, I don't know, actually there's a hard edge right there, not protected that well. Corner right there, corner there, yeah, not that good. Especially when I specify to pack with a 100ml of packaging around them. 
Hmm. Well, let's get into this thing. Brand new US power cable. So why do they bother chucking in a brand new cable to a country which isn't the US? When it came from the US, going outside the US, and they put a brand new cable in there. Why? I mean, it's going to somewhere else in the US, I can understand it, but... That's a waste of time, because now I'm going to cut the plug off that and chuck it in the bin, most likely. But anyway, this is what we got. Any damage? Corners look alright. Looks okay. No worse than the pictures anyway. It's a repair candidate. There you go. It's a WaveTech 11 megahertz function generator. Now this has got a bad display on it. It had signals missing from what I could see in the original listing. And I thought it would be a good thing to try and look at and maybe repair it. It's relatively cheap so I probably can't go too wrong with that. Amplitude knob, DC offset knob. It's a switch, but it's rubbing on the front panel, so these need relieving from the front panel a little bit. Those seem alright. Okay. Power button. Soft buttons. Looks alright. So this will be a future video. I have to change the voltage on it somehow. Must be inside there somewhere. Make sure I do that before I power it up. So, yes. Watch out for that video coming out. If you're not subscribed already to see my repair videos, make sure you subscribe. Because I've got nine bits of test gear. Sitting here now, I think. Is it nine? I don't know, I'm losing count. Um, How many? I picked up a few bits of test gear recently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got another thing coming. There's eight things. Well, that makes it a lot better now that it's eight and not nine. Yes, I thought so. So because of issues with trying to buy things off eBay and places like which is where my usual source is eBay, the price is just getting absolutely ridiculous for most things. It's just not worth bothering. You know, just the postage cost alone makes it not worth doing. You know, even if I've got the item for free, the postage is still too expensive. That's how it's getting. It's just ridiculous on eBay now. It used to be when I first started doing these videos, I could pick stuff up off eBay for a reasonable cost, and I knew that if I could fix it, I'd at least break even if I sold it, right? At the very least. And maybe make a few dollars on it if I do sell it, right? That's how it started out being. And that was okay for a couple of years, you know, a few years probably, I suppose. And then the prices started creeping up. And now the eBay prices are sometimes, you pay more for a broken item on eBay than you would pay for a brand new one of an equivalent item. It's just ridiculous. So eBay is becoming harder and harder to find things on, which is, you know, at least anything worthwhile. This was cheap for eBay. If I get it working, it was worth the money. At the very least, though, it makes video content and entertains you guys. So, anyway, just that's a current rant. So, that's off eBay. One of the few things in the collection I've obtained this week that actually is from eBay. I managed to find a few things locally, which is brilliant. Right, another big box. This is one of the things I picked up locally. I'm trying to package it really thoroughly, so it's well padded. Since I've done that. Barely. Yeah, okay. It's done it cheaply, but it's done. Like I said, this is something I picked up locally, which is rare. I don't often find things locally, which I can actually potentially look at. And this is a Lavelle. I don't know, haven't you heard of Lavelle before? New brand to me, made in England. This is an oldish thing, you know, it's fairly old, but it's a AC microvolt meter. And this can go right down. To microvolts, 15 microvolt full scale, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, and it's got an output as well. And I think it's got a battery pack inside it, because there's no power on the back. And obviously for devices which are trying to sense really low levels like this, um, AC mains, it's too noisy. You can't actually use AC mains because there's just too much noise involved. So these things being battery supplied is not uncommon. Um, even things like HP, some of the HP gear, it'd be an AC supply but an internal battery pack so when you want to do these low levels you unplug the AC and you only use the batteries in order to get the quietest readings possible. 
So, and it's actually got a battery scale here. Um, and it was left on, not off. Battery is flat. The interesting thing is, it's got calibration seals on it. But you have to get the thing open to change the battery pack or, char or charge the battery pack or whatever. Um, I'm not quite sure how that is, but unfortunately someone left it turned on, so the battery is now left flat. Never mind. So obviously someone didn't know what they're doing with it. Didn't really know what it was. As is, I think some of the items I picked up recently, there's someone which just does general auction stuff, and they pick up stuff cheap from auctions and they flick it back on. This, I believe, came from someone that does that sort of thing. So they wouldn't have a clue what they're doing with. So that's, that's you know, a knob with a switch. They wouldn't have a clue, I expect. So calibration seals front and rear. So I need to actually get this thing apart and check the battery pack. Should we open it and have a look inside? No, I'm going to save that for a video. I'm going to do a future video on this thing, so make sure you watch that. We'll find out what's inside it then. And if it even works. And this is another item I picked up locally. From a different supplier, different person. This guy was actually really good. He, um, he had a few items, and this is one of the things he actually basically gave me, really. He even drove down to Auckland to meet us. Now, and for him it's like a two, maybe three hour drive for him. It's quite decent, and it's about an hour's drive for us to get up there. So we um, met halfway and met up. And he, he gave me this, and he gave me a couple other pieces of gear as well. And his name is Gavin. Thank you much, Gavin. Brilliant to meet you. This is a HP power supply. So it's a 6633A, which is supposed to be 0 to 50 volts at 2 amps. So 100 watts max. So it's a fairly chunky power supply. And apparently it's got some issues. Perfect, exactly what you want. Always want issues. And it's got fuse taken out and stuff like that. I think it's a fuse holder part missing or something. He's actually chucked a fuse holder on the back here. Yeah, so that'd be a future video as well for this. Doing an overhaul on this thing, getting this thing up and going and checking it out, make sure it looks all right. We'll see how we go with that. Maybe I'll fix it, maybe I can't. We'll see. Watch the videos down the bottom there for other things you could potentially look at. Subscribe link right here if you're not already subscribed. So make sure you do that because you might want to see some videos about fixing things. And there's a Patreon support link over here, which is what helps me to buy Dits and Tisky and things to fix. And to make videos about, obviously. Also, helping support me on Patreon means I can spend money on Tisky without upsetting my wife too much. <laughs>